ask Assistant Muriel to draw the first name. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tanya Williams, and this is my second time officially running. I did accept a nomination to run in the last by-election, but I decided to stay in my post in public safety to finish some really important work, which I did, so I'm a, in a good place for change should that come. So the question is, why am I running? I wanted to share a little bit about myself in this speech, and maybe a little less technical and more from the heart, and really take the time to ask the question, what does community mean to me? Well, I grew up here and I went to Cattery until I was seven years old, but my mother moved us to BC for 20 years. So for 20 years, we moved back and forth. I've ha since been in the community for 19 years. I have an 18-year-old son in his first year of Syracuse University, but my memories of community life here before I moved were nothing but beautiful. I had my grandparents, Angus Jacobs, my grandmother, Dorothy Horn, Jacobs, my mother Valerie Jacobs, and my father, the late Wendell Williams. So I had a lot of cousins and a lot of experiences that I unfortunately missed out on. So community life meant a lot to me to come back and dedicate my career and my education to helping our community grow. I came back in 2000 and I worked for council on and off for about 19 years. I worked on the QKR and the CKR political agreement packages, including justice, environment, and subsidized daycare. And I always pause on the subsidized daycare, <clears throat> excuse me, because at the time I had a young, uh, a baby, and I had, like other parents, had to pay $150 to $200 a week in daycare. We also had to take our children outside of the community, and that made me work harder on that agreement. And so when we finished it and Step by Step was built, and my son came home with his Mohawk name on his projects for $5 a day was one of the best experiences of my life. I worked at a national center for First Nations governance for two years right here in our community. We had an office, <clears throat> excuse me, while I was in BC, I attained the University of BC and Douglas College and I have a, an associate's arts degree and I also have a diploma in social sciences and criminology. I am currently in my fourth year at Concordia University in international politics and I, where I hold a 4.0 GPA and I'm in my sixth year of leadership and communication in a program in Montreal. However, I want to tell you that that did not come easily. When I was in BC, I experienced a lot of racism, and I quit school, I quit high school, but I didn't quit on my education, and I went back to night school. But I wasn't prepared for university, and I wasn't prepared for college, so I struggled. And I had a little bit of a learning disability, and I had to figure it out the hard way. And going from an F to a 4.0 GPA was something that I did, but it was very difficult. But it was about a month ago that I had the best day of my life that I can relate my struggles with my education to my values of today is when I dropped my 18-year-old son off at Syracuse University with a full scholarship. I, like any other parent, broke down in complete tears and I ran away from him. And then he texted me and he said, don't cry and don't miss me. And it was at that second that I looked at that text and I realized something. I actually wasn't going to miss him because I had a little bit of enough. But I did realize one thing. He just went further than me. And that feeling of complete joy was in me, and I, I was absolutely shocked. But it wasn't really by accident. It was by design. His father invested in his education. We put him in French immersion when he was six. I went to French immersion for six months just to help him. I went to Concordia when he was seven. He was always a part of studying. I studied right along with him, brought him to tutors, brought him to speech and, and leadership communication classes, and then it happened. He went further than me. And it dawned on me that this feeling of wanting him to do better did not, extend, did not end with him. It extended to my community as well. I worked for the Collective Impact Group and where we strategized about what community problems were and what can we do to make them better. And one of my ideas was to have a mentorship for education so other children and, and people and adults don't have to be alone in their struggle with education. 
we, I had the opportunity to work with parolees in this community, and I've been pretty much in every prison around our community, working with a specialized group of people to help transition our parolees from prison back to the community into jobs that Corrections Canada would consider legitimate was one of the biggest struggles we had, but we met it every day, every time. I had to, I also had the, uh, recently I had the, uh, the opportunity to work with a team of community members, professionals, members of the church and KSES to work on um, a residential healing initiative that we worked on. And I got to tell my story about the struggle and the journey of my father attending residential school and it was one of the most empowering experiences. In closing, I just want to say these positions need to be filled with people with experience, education, and can hit the ground running in the right direction with the right passion, and I am that candidate. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Next one, Angie knows. Good evening, good evening, everyone. My name is Angie Lee Jokbanoto White Bean Brasco. I would like to start off by thanking everyone for coming out tonight and also thanking the electoral office and the uh, Mohawk Council for setting this night up. My grandparents are Sarah Nolan, Lawrence Whitebean, Peter Dybo, and Virginia Jocks. I'm 39 years old. I'm a member of the Wolf Clan. I married for 19 years to my husband, Curtis Brasco. I have five children and five beautiful grandchildren. I have been involved in Kahnawake sports for approximately 16 years, which includes hockey, lacrosse, um, football, soccer, uh, and the KSS wrestling team. I'm a new parent to the soccer and football. I started out as a mother, a fan, to a team manager for multiple teams at once, to a lacrosse board member. I even went as far as lending my personal vehicle to the wrestling team so they don't have to spend money on a rental. I am a strong believer in helping our youth of Kahnawake. I have also fundraised for multiple organizations in town. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, including getting donations for Indian Way School to purchase new supplies. My main concern is for the children today, actually not only today, but for the future, for their education and their sports. <coughs> Sorry. For my children, grandchildren, also your children and your grandchildren. I'm always willing to push myself to learn new skills so I may take on many different tasks. To those who, to those who know me, notes that I am very trustworthy, respectful, loyal, and I am always looking out for everyone's well-being. I have always taken the time to acquire new skills. I have completed the customer service program at Dewaduni Dukta and the entrepreneur training course at the First Nations Adult Regional Education. I know I, I, know I will always give 100%, whether it be at home, office, or any other projects I may take on. I know I am the right candidate for the council. Thank you, and good luck to the other, other candidate, uh, candidates sitting here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Next up is Cody. Sego, my name is Cody Daibo. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my parents are Rodney Daibo and Donna Lahash. I have a daughter, her name is Ivy Marie Daibo, and she is two and a half years old. Uh, my partner is Kirsty Daibo. 
I was born and raised in Kahnawake. I went to school in town, in Montreal, in Ottawa, and in Ngozesne. I worked in my aunt's store as a teenager, as an electrical apprentice in my later teen years, as a peacekeeper during my early to mid-twenties, and for the past three years I've been working at the Cadre Hospital as the security guard. The world is changing, the climate is changing. We all see the effects, there's stronger storms, hotter summers, more droughts worldwide. For instance, Israel has just come out of a five-year drought. We all have seen the various movements and calls to action the population wants world leaders to take. I too believe we need to move towards a cleaner and greener future. It is not too late to reverse the damage that has been done to the planet. We have already begun to do our part in the battle against climate change. For one thing, the tree planting initiative that took place a couple weeks ago by the Gunwaga Environmental Protection Office, and individuals who choose to recycle and cut down their carbon emissions. I myself, I like to bike to work as much as possible, as long as the weather permits it. It only takes one person to get the wheels turning to begin the path to show that there's another way. I ran in the last by-election, and my focus was and still is on long-term self-sustainability. I've mentioned my ideas to begin a communal farming industry and to start our own clean energy power grid. From these initiatives, we would not only create much-needed jobs with benefits in the community, but also increase the quality of life by having healthier food at a lower cost and hopefully one day free residential power. I believe that is what we need to do. There will always be a need to find a new source of revenue. However, we cannot have a strong economy if one person is struggling. That's why I feel we need to focus on how to make sure our people are not struggling. Strong economies are created when everybody has extra, not just a few. Therefore, we need to focus on our own farming industry and our own power grid to ensure nobody goes to bed hungry and don't have to worry if their power is going to be shut off. Change is always scary. We are beings of habit. We like to do things that we know. But change doesn't mean bad or worse. Sometimes we need to take that leap. We have a chance to ensure our survival, not just as a community, but as a people. We can be the example for our sister communities to follow, for the Confederacy to follow, for the world to follow. The peacemaker showed us his vision of a unified people and the strength of a bundle of arrows compared to the strength of one arrow. Now I ask you to see my vision of a self-sustainable Ganawage, one that will lead us into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. Next is uh, Robert Bobby Jr. Well, good evening, everybody. As uh, Jack Nicholson would say, I'm back. Well, it was a difficult decision to run for council again. It's been a year and a half that I've been away from the table. When I didn't get back in a year and a half ago, it was like, upsetting, but I think it was a blessing. Because personally, I had to deal with the loss of my mom and many other issues and the loss of my best friend, I guess. The thing is what I can, what I'm here about is as my dad would say, speak from the heart. After so many years of policing, I got to learn and see what our communities need, the needs of our people, the needs of our youth, the needs of our, our elders. Um, I feel that I'm a great listener. I'm very passionate for our community. I always want the best for our community. I always, um, my heart is in the right place for our community because I will listen to everybody. I will not turn anybody away. I have an open door policy. But over the years, I've learned so much from my colleagues that are here tonight. I've learned many lessons. What I've taught is to always think about your community. My passion is about the rights and interests of our, of our people, First Nations people, Benawaga residents, our community at whole. I feel that the government is always trying to put us down, trying to knock us down, and they want control over all our First Nations across Canada. In the past, I've seen that once we work together, and like Cody says, you know, if you have many arrows, we're stronger. And that's what I've seen over the six years when I work with the table, is that when you have a great discussion, you always can become stronger, better, and better leaders. And that's how I feel and what I can bring back to the table, if elected, that the passion, the, the knowledge that I gained, 
and the understanding of our people, their needs. And that's, um, it would be up to you. And if that's what you want, that's what I'll give. No. I don't know if there's any more left, but uh, Keith, you're not necessarily the last nor the least. Good evening. Well, that's, uh, that's a lot of good stuff coming out of there. <laughs> um, thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, this is my first time running. Um, I was nominated by my mother and my cousin because my grandmother couldn't make it because she had got surgery. Um, I'm not sure too many people know me or what I work with, but I work with Ganawage uh, Medical Transport and fire, the fire hall to, as a first responder and I guess uh, helping people get around when they need it. Um, my father is Billy Jr. McGregor. My mom, Cheryl Montour. My grandparents are Johnny Fee Montour and Carol Montour. And Billy McGregor Sr. and Kathleen McGregor. My client is Snipe, but if you ever worked uh, iron or on the fire brigade or anything, you might have seen me. Um, I think I'd be a very good candidate because I'd like to help this community as much as it's helped me in the past. Because growing up, uh, my parents divorced and oh, sorry, <laughs> a lot of it was like I had places to go, I had places to see, and a lot of it came up to being brought up properly, and finally just stand here above everybody else. Um, But from working medical transport and the fire hall and everywhere in between, everybody needs help. Everybody needs some form of help if it's to, just to get somewhere or when you need something. And you need the right people there for that moment, no matter if it's for the fire hall or if it's for the medical to help you getting, because a lot of people can't walk anymore, some people can't move properly anymore. Somebody always needs help. I don't want to make promises about anything because I'm sure in most situations they don't all come to fruition because you have to deal with everything and there's so many circumstances and there's so many life, life is always difficult and it will always ever change. But with the right people, the right steps, things can always change for the better. I'm hoping I get that chance to show my worth to the place I've lived my entire life and help improve where it needs it the most, the community and its people. Because no matter what, everybody needs it. My great grandfather, Matty McGregor, was once a counselor years ago. I never met him. I would have wished I would have. And I like to follow his footsteps. Thank you.